if you are doing a task repeatedly again and again right until you satisfy some condition or count that is what we call it as a looping for loop i'll be executing this for loop suppose when the condition fails it stops its execution right at that time this statement will be executed that's what you have to understand if i encounter this continuous statement anywhere in my program it will just skip one iteration so listen here the picture starts now hello everyone i welcome all of you to the second session on conditional and iterative statements so guys in this second session what is that i am going to discuss so before discussing that let me just give you a brief recap what is that i have done in the last session so without wasting your much of your time let me start that right so what is that i have discussed i have discussed different types of statements so what is that i have discussed different types of statements when it comes to the statements so we have three different types of statements can you recollect everybody so guys we started with empty statement so we started with empty statements so what is the next type of statement that we have so we have something called simple statement we have something called simple statement and the last type of statement is compound statement we have something called compound statement so this is the three different types of statement that we have discussed in the previous session and also we have discussed the second topic that is statement flow control so what is the topic statement flow control so what exactly is statement flow control so can you tell me so how many different types of statement flow control yes exactly we have three so what is the first one that we have the first one that we have is sequential so what is the first one that we have sequential and selection what is the second one that we have selective and the third one that we have is iterative third one that we have is iterative so we have statements and flow control statement flow control these two topics we have discussed in the previous session along with that one of the important topic that we have discussed that is different types of if statement so different types of if statement so we have discussed simple if then we discussed if else and also we discussed else if and then nested if this is what we have discussed in the previous session so guys so hope uh, you have seen all these things in the previous session suppose if you have not watched please go back and check the video so let's start what is that we have in today's session so guys i will be discussing the important function that is range function what exactly this range function is all about as soon as you look at this parenthesis you should be able to identify this is a function right what exactly this range function is doing and also i will be discussing some of the things with respect to iterations and looping statements so after discussing the different types of looping statements i will be discussing jump statements in this session so we have two different types of jump statements so i will be discussing that in detail let's start with the first concept that is range function so what exactly this range function is all about and why do i use this range function so let us understand that so first of all range function is a function which will generate some series of numbers it generates some series of numbers so i should tell this function from where it should start and where it should end so the numbers whatever i have in between that range so all those numbers will be printed so that is the role of this range function so guys how exactly this range function is working what is the syntax of this let's have a look so guys you have to write the name of the function that is range name of the function that is range and you have to mention the lower limit before that you have to open the parenthesis you have to mention the lower limit so can you tell us what exactly the lower limit is so from where exactly you want to start the numbers so that is what i will be calling it as a lower limit after that you have to give the comma then you have to mention the upper limit so upper limit in the sense like where exactly it will end so that is what you have to understand with respect to the range function let's have a quick look in the example guys range 
I have given 12 comma 18. So what exactly I will get? So I will get something like this. So from 17, is it? From 12, I have the numbers till 17. Please observe. I have the beginning number as 12. So my lower limit is 12. So where exactly I have stopped? 17. But my upper limit is 18. So please understand whatever the lower limit I have given from there exactly it will start but upper limit so whatever I have given so previous value till the previous value it will print is what you need to understand with respect to the range function. So let's go to the next concept that we have so iterative or looping statements iterative or looping statements iterative or looping statements so why are you saying this more than one number of times? Right. So guys, this is what we call it as a looping. If you are doing a task repeatedly again and again, right, until you satisfy some condition or count, that is what we call it as a looping. That is what we call it as a looping. You are doing the task again and again, again and again. So until you satisfy some counting or some condition, okay, that's what we call it as a looping. Then how many types of loops we have? We have Two different types of loop, one is for loop, another one is while loop. Please understand how many different types of loop we have. We have for loop, another one is while loop. So let us understand how exactly these loops are working. So let me start with the first one that is for loop, right? So what is the syntax and uh, when I have to use this for loop? So when I want to execute some set of statements again and again, again and again, but when I know how many number of times I have to execute, then I have to use for loop. Then I have to use for loop. Please understand, when I know how many number of times I have to execute some set of statements, so then I have to use for loop, right? So what is the syntax for this for loop, sir? We understood. I have to execute 10 number of times, then uh, I have to use for loop, sir, right? So what is the syntax then? So please understand the syntax. So I have to use a keyword called for. I have to use a keyword called for. And you have to mention the variable name here. And you have to use a keyword. This is a keyword. You have to mention in. And you have to mention the sequence. You have to mention the sequence. From where exactly you are taking the values is what I will call it as a sequence. Right? Then after that, whatever the statements that you wanted to repeat, so that you have to mention it inside the for loop. Inside the for loop in the sense, please observe, I have colon. I have the colon. So I have to indent all the statements, whatever the statements that I have indented. So all those statements belongs to for loop. So how many number of times that you wanted, so that many number of times, that group of statements will be executed. Right? So let's have a quick look. So guys, how do I write the for loop? So I have to use the keyword for. So let's take a. So a is what? a is a variable. a is what? a is a variable. So I have to use, what is the next thing that I have to write? I have to write the keyword that is in. I have to write the keyword that is in. Right? Then after that, let's take a range or let's take, I'll just write list. Right? One, two, three. So this is what I have. So I will just write L. L is what? L is list. L is list. This can be a sequence. This can be a sequence. I have set of values. I wanted to access each and every value. I wanted to access each and every value. How exactly this is working, sir, with for loop? So please observe. So after writing this L, so what is that I have to write? I have to write colon. I have to write colon. So I will write print. I will write print so print a what exactly will happen so please understand listen to me carefully so this a so will go to this l to the first element in the first iteration so right now a is is a variable which holds the first item that i have in the sequence so l is a list so i have a set of values so fine using this variable i will I will access all the elements, all the data items that I have in the sequence. Right now in the first iteration, A will go to the first value whatever I have. So after that, I will print A. What is the value of A right now? Right now A value is 1. So fine. After the 
now once it is done once it executes this statement it will go for the next iteration so a will go to the next value what is the next value i have 10 so it will print 10 so like this all the items whatever i have so it will be accessed and it will be printed so like this number of times this statements will be executed so more than one number of times this statement will be executed so that is what we call it as a loop that is what we call it as a loop and i know how many number of times i should execute this that's why i'm using for loop that's why i'm using for loop right so what is the syntax as of now you just have to remember only one thing you just have to remember the syntax that's it now we move on with the lat programs you will have a better hang of uh, this for loop right so you just have to understand the syntax the keyword is for and you you can use any variable name i can also write kaushik then after that you can write keyword in you should write the keyword that is in and then you have to mention the sequence set of values whatever you wanted to access and then you can mention the set of statements which you wanted to print or which you wanted to execute repeatedly again and again that should be there inside the block of this for loop this is how the for loop is working moving on to the next concept i have while loop so i have two loops one is for another one is while so when i know how many number of times that i have to execute i will be using for when i don't know how many number of times i should execute i'll be using while based on condition i will be i'll be executing the statements so with respect to while so that's what you have to understand when i satisfy the condition then only i will execute the statements whatever i have inside the while but when i know how many number of times i have to execute i'll be using the for but both are doing the same job what is that so it will execute some set of statements again and again again and again so that is what you need to understand let's understand the syntax of this while so we all know how exactly the for is working and what is the syntax of for let us understand the syntax of while so guys we have to write the keyword while we have to write the keyword while and we have to write the condition after that whatever the test condition that you want to write so that is what you will be mentioning after the while keyword then you will end the statement with the colon suppose if you have the statement right with the colon so you have to indent so please do not write like this if you write like this so you will be ending with an error so guys so you have to indent this statements you have to indent this statements so for example whatever the statements that you wanted to have inside the while loop so you will be writing after a tab space after a tab space so this is the syntax of while loop this is the syntax of while loop if this condition is satisfied whatever the statements that i have here this will be executed this will be executed so until i fail to satisfy this condition i'll be executing this set of statements is what you need to understand right so moving on to the next one components of components of while loop i can also call it as components of while loop so loop control elements also i can use it i can just use both the statements but listen to me what is the different components that i have so the first thing is initialization of expression so guys i have to initialize a value let's for example a is equal to 10 so this is what i will call it as the initialization this will be above uh, no outside the loop outside the while loop right then after that text test expression so this is what i will call it as the test expression i have to write the keyword while then i will be writing like you know a is uh, greater than or equal to 10 colon then after that body of the loop whatever you wanted to execute that is what i will call it as a body of the loop then update expression so each time i should increment or i should decrement the value of this a right so that is what i will be writing as update expression that i should write it inside the loop update expression it can be a is equal to a plus one or whatever the whatever the condition that you wanted to give so it is up to you based on your logic based on your logic that is what you have to understand so guys 
let me just write uh, a is equal to a plus 1. So please understand this is our first element. So you are initializing the value outside the loop. Point number 1 you need to understand. You are initializing the value outside the loop and then you should use a keyword. You should use a keyword while and then this is what I will call it as a test expression. This is what we, we call it as a test expression or test condition which you have to satisfy. Only if the condition is true, whatever the body, while body you have in the sense, whatever the statements that you have inside the while loop, you will be executing that, right? Then after that, you have the update expression. So you have to update this value. So guys, this will be there inside the while loop. It depends, like you know, you can decrement or you can increment or you can just add some value. So whatever you want, depends on your logic that you can have it inside the while loop. This is how I have the while loop, right? So moving on to the next concept that I have, loop else statement. What exactly uh, this loop else statement? We have it for uh, for else, right? I have the for loop, okay? I have the for loop. I'll be executing this for loop. Suppose when the condition fails, it stops its execution, right? At that time, this statement will be executed. That's what you have to understand. It's very simple. I'll be executing the for loop, right? So you all know the syntax of the for loop. So keyword that is for, you'll be using a variable, whatever the variable that you want, you will be mentioning here. And then keyword in, you have to mention the sequence and colon, right? So I have some set of statements inside this for loop. So these set of statements will be executed until it satisfies some count, right? So once it fails, it stops executing. It stops executing the statements again and again. Once it fails, so it starts executing this else statement. That's what you have to understand. So this is how the loop else statement is working for all of you. Then what is the next one that I have? So I have break statement. I have break statement. What exactly this break statement is doing? Can anybody tell me? Guys, listen to me carefully. Break statement terminates the loop. It lies within. What exactly break statement is doing? It terminates the loop. It terminates the loop. What, what exactly it means? Uh, okay, I have an example for all of you. Right? So, if, right? So, can you identify the uh, box here in this code? Can you tell me the bugs what what we have so i have the if statement this is what we have discussed what type of if this is the if else right so if i have the keyword if and this is the test condition then followed by colon so if i have the colon can i have it here so i should not try it like this so please i will be repeating this again and again so that you will come out of it so that you will get a hang of it so what is that how should i write this so sh i should write like this so if what is that i have so b is equal to is equal to 0 colon then what is the next statement print so i have a tab space here so print whatever i have the statements i have to mention it like this this is how this is not valid this is how, this is not valid so fine after this i have break statement after this i have break statement please observe then i have else so should i write else here so suppose if I write else, what will happen? It will come under this if block only. So that is not right. So I have to come back and I have to write else colon and whatever the statements that I have. I have colon here. Again, I have to give tab space and I have to start writing the statement whatever I have. So listen here, the picture starts now. So I have the break statement here. If I use the break statement, imagine I have the loop. For example, it can be for or it can be while, whatever the loop that I have. So it is inside the loop. It is executing again and again and again and again. A lot of iterations are happening. Okay. It can take 10 iterations or 5 iterations. 5 times it can execute or 6 times it can execute based on the logic that I have given. Right. It is in the loop. If I come across with this keyword that is break, it will come out of the loop. It will come out of the loop. One loop, it can have... 10 iteration, 9 iteration, it is not mandatory that I should have only 10. So it can have n number of iterations. One loop can have n number of iterations. Please observe this point because it is very important when it comes to the next concept. So loop can have n number of iterations. 
what will happen if I encounter break in my program? So it will come out of this loop itself. It will come out of this loop. That is the speciality of break. That is the speciality of break. Please observe. Stay tuned. I have the next statement that is continuous statements. I have this next statement that is continuous statement. What exactly this continuous statement is working? Guys, I have the continuous statement here. What will happen if I encounter this continuous statement anywhere in my program? It will just skip one iteration. It will skip one iteration. I told you in the previous slide, one loop can have n number of iterations. Break will come out of the loop, but continue will skip one iteration. Suppose if it is have, it, it's there in the ninth, so it will skip ninth iteration, it will directly go to the eighth iteration. So like that, so there is a difference between break and continue. Can you tell me what is the difference that we have? So guys, we have jumping statements. What do we have? We have jumping statements, we have break. What is that we have? We have break and we have continue. So guys, so it will just skip the loop. It will skip the loop. It will skip the iteration. It will skip the iteration. This is what you have to understand with respect to the jump statement. The last concept for the day is, so guys, we have nested loops. So please identify the bugs here. What is that I have done? So can I write like this? Will it be a nested loop if I write like this? So I have the for loop number one, for loop number two, and I have print statements. Can I write like this? No. If I write like this, it is not nested. So what should I do for this? For, for is a for loop keyword that I have to write. So variable that is i. So in range, in range. So guys, what is that I have given? One comma six colon, right? So this for loop should come inside this for loop. What is that I have to do? I have to indent. So for j in range. What is the range that I have given? 1 of i colon. Then print statement whatever you want to have. So whatever you want to print, you can print. So guys, I have the loop inside the loop. I have the loop inside the loop, right? So that is what I will call it as a nested loop. That is what I will call it as a nested loop. Please understand that, okay? So how many times it will work? Can you, can you just think and tell me? Suppose... If this is the code, can you just comment how many times this loop, this statements will be printed? Can you guess? This is the assignment that I'm giving for all of you. So guys, I have come to an end of this session by this concept. So please go back and watch the video again. Write down the syntax of all the iterative statements and break and continue. That is jump statements. So see you all with the next chapter. Until then, please take care of your health, take care of your family, stay safe. Bye-bye.